Hello everybody, welcome to another video and welcome to another uh, behind the scenes vlog uh, for the Powermac G5 Hackintosh build. I apologise, there was one person in the comments in part 1 that apologised about the audio. I'm so sorry, this is still the same camera. Um, I'll do my best in Final Cut to level the audio so it doesn't hurt your ears quite as much. But I was meant to be getting a new phone and uh, it hasn't arrived yet so uh, I'm stuck on my Nexus 4 for another week. But um, yeah, doing it the opposite round this time, uh, doing the talking bit first. I like doing these talking bits because if you go straight into just B-roll shots and voiceovers, I think it takes a lot of personality out of the videos. Um, I started off making super, super long videos. It was just one take stuff, very much like this, really. And um, I think you get your personality across a lot more if you if you talk on the fly so when you completely f like switch over to a cinematic style a full cinematic style when it's all voiceover I, th I think the video ends up looking very very clinical and um, you don't tend to you, you don't tend to get your personality in there at all so I find if you show your face at the beginning and the end of the video it just adds that little bit of uniqueness a little bit of you to the video um, before you get all serious with the voiceover so um yeah I'm gonna be doing it with all with all of the parts same setup um our two soft boxes we've got the one lamp there I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the last video but um it just adds a little bit of warm light it because you've got these two here it's just nice to have a slightly it's a very small light but it's just a little pinch of warm uh, hit in your face so it just makes it look at that, that tiny bit better but um yeah. This is it's night time, as I explained in the last video, so um, this is all I'm going to be able to do today. Then tomorrow will be um, when we really, really get started and start modifying that case. I'm so, so excited, but so nervous at the same time to finally get to work on that case. But um, yeah, I've got to do, do this first. So it's the next day. Um, yesterday, obviously, you saw me doing the intro, outro bit. But uh, today is the actual day where we get started on the, on the case modding, and I am so nervous that I am gonna mess this up so bad because it's really really hard to you don't get a second chance at this. You either mess it up or or you you get it right. With that on, you can't see because obviously you, you need some of the G five material left behind to screw. The, the screws into so you have to take it off remember where you put the screws and then pencil where you want to cut that isn't going to get in the way of the fans and it's just a bit of a nightmare um i just it's really really hard to record this kind of video um if you saw the the imac project we did a couple of videos ago it's just really really hard to when you having to focus on stuff and there's like massive massive gaps between shots it's really hard to keep a, a consistent look so I've got the rough shape now um, this side is pretty fine you've got a lot of a lot of sort of uh, a pretty large margin for error say because it, you, you've got to measure on the number of rows of the holes across but on this side I just put the um, back plate on roughly you can see that the screw holes on that side are the last ones there's only two before you hit the IO shield or the G5's IO so with the shitty Dremel that I've got trying to cut that it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna have to go up there on the second row across that's pretty precise stuff so um luckily I don't have to cut around any, any of that as far as I'm aware it's just this lower bit but um yeah it's causing me a fair amount of headaches so I just finished this tiny little top bit here it took me 15 minutes and I have to do all the way, all down there which is probably maybe three or four times the length of that so say four times again there maybe three times again or four times again 
and then the same distance. It's just... I don't know what I was expecting when I bought this thing. It looked bigger in the picture for one. <laughs> and um, what it is, like this here, is it's, uh, I said it was mains and everything, so I was like, all right, we're going to get a decent power rope off the wall. This is a battery um, charger that goes into the wall. This is a bit, it runs, I, I'm presuming it runs off, off the power of what a battery one would. Um, a shit battery one at that as well, but it doesn't have a battery. It just runs off the mains and it's just connected to a battery connector. But it's just terrible, guys. It takes forever. It's loud. It's overheated. It's fucking burning my hand. It's just a piece of shit. And um, this is just going to take me forever. And this is what I mean about recording these kind of videos. It is so difficult because you just want to put the camera down and just get on with it. Hallelujah. I was so excited when I hit that point there. So we've done one little bit at the top there, from the fan to the corner, all the way down to there. We've still got to go all the way across here, all the way back up, and then across. But uh, yeah, nearly halfway there. But I'm going to call it a, a day for today because um, I'm losing light now, and then the video uh, quality degrades. So yeah, it's. Get in there, slowly but surely. So, it's another day. Um, as you can probably tell, new camera. Um, I'm actually using the GoPro here. Uh, I've had it for a while, and I've used it on my bike and stuff, and it's been awesome, awesome doing outside -y stuff. But um, I'm just sort of going to do a little trial run here and see how it does. I'm going to remove the fisheye effect in uh, Final Cut and see how it does as just sort of a, a, a vlogging camera. Because, um, yeah, it can't be any worse than Nexus 4. But uh, here we go. This is the power supply. This is what I've been slaving over for the last God knows how many hours. Um, first of all, I wanted to cut, just cut the, the CX-400 down and place it in the PSU casing. Use all the original cable management things and sort of nice and simple. That didn't really work out, though. Um... I don't have anything that's really sharp enough or strong enough to cut through because uh, the, the Dremel is useless because it's because the power supply casing is steel. It can just about get through aluminium, but steel it, it doesn't doesn't stand a chance. So um, I just then decided to to take the whole circuit board out um, and sort of just try and do everything on the fly. I've got the original power socket uh, wired up. All it all works, guys. It's all perfect. I've got our two uh, Galley Silent Six fans here, plugged in where they were originally in the in the G5. I'm I've tried to keep this space clear because it's so easy. You would not believe how difficult it was to get those cables in, in just pushed up in that corner, and to also have them at the exact length that I want them to. So they plug straight into the motherboard with, with no no slack, or they're not too tight. And I've got two um, fan headers coming off the side by here, so they're going to sit by there. And uh, the front intake uh, fan assembly, because of course I can't I can't use the original um, modular connector because the modular modular connector isn't on the motherboard. But um, they're going to plug into there, so they're going to be easy enough to unplug. I've got the two here that they're going to be for the rear ones, they're going to be by there and then these two are plugged in internally because you're never going to have to unplug them but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare, it's really 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 difficult to judge and get everything right and um, I was just, I, I was just concentrating so much I didn't record a single clip in like six hours because I was running up and down to the shed with a hacksaw and all sort of stuff going on, so I, I was concentrating too much to record the video, so it's just going to be a sort of before and after shot in, in the actual end of the video. But, uh, yeah, looking good now, guys, we're really, really getting there. We've got our rear panel assembly thing all done. We've got our middle uh, section here. I'm not sure if I've shown you this, actually, um, with all of our fans installed, looking absolutely beastly. I just need to figure out a way to, to mount it. I've got the power supply done. 
and um, I've got to get to work on like SATA cables now. I've, I've made custom SATA cables so they, they'll sit perfectly in the G5 like that. Um, but ugh, the cable management job in this, don't underestimate it, guys. It is absolutely gargantuan. It's now a couple of days later. Um, part two has gone live, and um, the response has been awesome. The, the the feedback I'm getting for this series so far is absolutely incredible. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how many views it's going to get. The series. I mean, my 2015 Hackintosh build series did incredibly well. It's pretty much on the front page of of every search when you search Hackintosh build. So I'm really pleased with how uh, that turned out reception wise. Obviously, that was a year ago, and there are parts of the parts of the videos that I. Um, I'm not fussed on anymore, and I wish I could sort of do over, but that's the case with, with any any uh, of your videos. But um, I'm not sure whether people are, in, are really interested in this kind of thing, um, whether it's got sort of like a mass market appeal. But uh, here it is, guys. This is the finished G5, and uh, all I can say is, wow, it is ten times better than anything I expected I was going to be able to achieve when I went into this project. Uh, it is literally almost perfect, and um, I honestly could not have asked for more. The whole laser hive thing, super, super simple, and it just makes everything so much easier. And it was really nice to be able to just put my little twist on it with the 2005 G5s in a structure and customize that and make it fit and stuff. It was just, it's just a really, really fun project to do so far, and I am just dying to uh, replace this guy really. Um, there's no contest when you see a G5 case next next to a really nice bit Phoenix case but uh, the G5 is just so much more classier. But um, this is basically in depth how the shelf is working guys. I've got the GoPro now squeezed inside the G5 case so you can get a close up uh, angle. There is the standoff as you can see it's been uh, popped off as I was cutting the cutout for the motherboard tray so it doesn't interfere with um, the motherboard capacitors in any way or whatever so it can't uh, short it out. It's been moved over ever so slightly so it lines up with that motherboard standoff and as you can see there's, there's, there's a couple of washers um, behind uh, the standoff um, uh, that basically again it just gives me that little bit more breathing space and just ensures that, that nothing is going to short out um, the motherboards. So then you've got that cutout there which just again avoids any contact with with this plate because when this is a metal build one thing is touching another and another thing is touching another and then you're going all the way down to the power supply and you've just got to be really careful with um, uh, what, what metal is contacting with metal essentially. Um, and then over here this is our sort of middle screw. I'm really, really pleased that this lined up. This is this is the PCI lane. Um, I don't even know what you call it. I, I believe that they were there for, for shipping purposes, so ultra long cards could just sit in the little slots and they wouldn't snap in transit. Um, but it looks looks awesome, and this holds it in the shelf for the uh, thing to sit in. So I thought I may as well uh, reuse it. The, the screw sits in an in original standoff because obviously this is a 2005 G5 is in a structure so it's all completely different the way it was mounted and stuff so um, that was just pure luck and that basically helps the shelf hold its own weight without that screw in there and without these in as I'll show you in a minute the, the, the shelf would bow that having that screwed in there essentially allows everything to just stay upright and then I'm gonna have to pull out this uh, fan assembly here to show you the, this uh, next bit but um, this in here I'm not sure how well you can see in there but that is how we have got our, our left um, uh, left side screwed in essentially I've reused um, part of the back plate the back panel that we dremeled off um, for the rear panel as it's got nice sort of systematic um, equally spaced out screws, uh, not screws, holes, it was really easy to sort of gauge how many over and how many up I'd have to go. So basically it's, it was just a case of uh, screwing a nut and a screw into the shelf and then it was just a case of lining it up with an existing standoff wherever that may be and uh, screwing it in. So that is how 
um, the shelf works essentially. You just unscrew that, screw that, screw and that screw, and then the whole shelf lifts out, giving you access to the motherboard and stuff. Um, and this is how you basically get access to your motherboard without taking the shelf out, just as you would in the normal G5. Fan assembly slides out, and then this G5 heatsink cover, you sort of shift it across to the left, and then pull it out because it's on the uh, little sort of like uh, metal balls, sort of like rails, so it just slides over and then pulls out. Super ridiculously simple. And as you can see, the shelf holds its own weight, it's nice and solid in there, it's not going anywhere. And um, it's just so, so, so awesome, guys. Um, I am chuffed a bit with it, it is just absolutely incredible. One thing uh, people have mentioned is uh, what on earth is this, basically. Um, it, it doesn't fit in an otherwise nice looking uh, case mod, basically. This, obviously the internals here are from a 2005 G5, the inner structure. Um, and as you can see on the bottom of this fan assembly, there is no lug to slide in, it just slides in freely. This is obviously a 2000, 2003 uh, Power Mac G5. And the 2003 uh, G5's fan assemblies had uh, lugs on the top and the bottom, so they would slide in and lock into place. The newer ones don't have that, so basically I just had to grind that down um, to allow it to slide in properly. I will take it out and um, sand it down and stuff to get to get the finish looking nice, and um, possibly do something, possibly vinyl wrap it. Um, to, to just keep it all looking 100% uniform because obviously there's always going to be the hole in it but when everything is in you, you don't see it at all and um, yeah here is our oops, here is our um, customized power cable I didn't make this uh, I didn't didn't show this off in the video because it was just one of those you know one of those jobs that that you like to do on your own because it's quite fiddly and um, you don't know how it's going to go at the start but basically um, we've got power button here that's uh, for obviously for the power button on the front, the power boards. Um, we've got one negative and one positive uh, wire here for the power LED, which is really awesome. So the original white LED works, and uh, this is a, obviously a, a USB header. So I've got the power button, the power LED, and uh, USB working. I didn't bother with with the headphone port or firewire. firewire because I don't have a Firewire uh, header on the motherboard and um, I use my uh, Logitech speakers so I never, um, I'll never need that, that headphone jack. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, this has been a monstrous uh, part to record and this has been a massively disjointed uh, filming vlog. I do apologise, as you know I've been trialling various cameras throughout it and um, I'm, I'm not, this, this GoPro isn't too shabby. It's just annoying not being able to see um, what you're recording because it's such a wide angle lens. You really have to to get in close to get a nice uh, close up shot of something. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I I, I don't even know uh, how I'm going to stitch it all together, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it in in some shape or form. And uh, look out for part three coming in the near future. So um, yeah, as always, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.